The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast World Tour is real. Thursday, July 26th in Toronto. Saturday, August 4th in New York City. Saturday, August 18th in Houston, Texas. Wednesday, August 22nd in fucking Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Union Transfer. I cannot wait to play Philly. And Saturday, the 25th of August in Boston, Massachusetts. We're coming out there, Brady. August 25th, I Am Rappaport Tour. You can get tickets, www.iamrappaporttour.com. Come see me, G. Moody, and you know we're always going to have special guests all summer long. I am Tour.com. All right, what's up? It's a brand new I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. On today's episode, we are reviewing the entirety of all the Kanye West records dropped in the month of June. I have beef with the transgender community, and we have some sick fucks of the week. All that and more with me and G. Moody on a brand new Smash Mouth Freestyle Friday I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan Let's start this off with something real nice, something real proper, something fun. All right, you hear the funk. Those are moody beats. Yep. Banger beats. Unmistakable. The unmistakable sounds of G Monetti. <laughs> My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the international hero. A.K.A. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. A.K.A. the Gringo Man Dingo. Here to give it to you, rough, rugged, and raw. 15 rounds. 15 rounds, baby. Yeah. Take, you, take you into the deep waters of the 15th round when everybody's cut, everybody's bleeding. You should, uh, you should be called the Robert Hayes of podcasting. The guy from uh, Airplane, mm. that actor. <laughs> Take you into the deep waters of the podcast world. On today's I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast with the co-host, the call him the Black Ed McMahon. Yeah. The Aaron Pryor of podcast. Yes. Yes. Give him the bottle. Give him the sippy bottle. Yeah, give me that. Remember, <laughs> give, give, him, give him the mix. Remember when Aaron yeah. Pryor was having that fight and uh, his, his corner said, give him the mix, the mix. Yep. And he came out like the Tasmanian devil yeah, in the next round. he started doing backflips to shit. <laughs> Yo, how did they not stop that fight? He, he Everything was, was good. I, he, he, <laughs> Yo. They had the bottle in the corner. Yeah, he said, give me the mix. <laughs> they, they gave him a regular bottle of water. He said, no, no, the mix. The, the, the trainer, I can't remember his name. They gave him a steroid potion. And he, <laughs> he, he, he got punched and did a backflip. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. Aaron, Aaron Pryor does a backflip. Uh, if you don't know who that is, is a fighter from the 80s. Tough, tough fighter. I believe he was from St. Louis. Yeah, that Lou. Um, how was your fourth, Mr. Moody? Oh, man, it was great, man. Um, I, I spent it with uh, the great, the extremely funny uh, Mike Epps. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, he was, it was great, man. He was uh, uh, the best host. We had so much food. Good soul food, good times. And I want to shout my man Cliff Love for bringing me, bringing me out there. And nobody got their fucking fingers blown off? Nah, man. It was adults. We were drinking. We was eating good soul food. We was laughing, playing uh, cars, all kind of shit. Smoking some of that good legal stuff. It was good, man. <laughs> so so nobody, nobody did the Jason Pierre Paul? Oh, oh, nah. Uh, the, the, these are rational human beings. You don't hold an M80 and light it. Sorry. Uh, shout out to Jason Pierre Paul, former New York Giant um, and Tampa Bay Buccaneer, because we make jokes about him, and he he kept it rough, rugged, and raw on the Fourth of July, and he posted. It's been three years now, or is it two years now? Got to be uh, two. Two years. Two years since the injury. Um, Jason Pierre Paul, if you don't remember, is the former um, uh, uh, New York Giant star. Um, and now he just got traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers while he was with the New York Giants, uh, 4th of July. I believe it was two years ago. As you know or don't know, 
Uh, we don't fact check at the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Pockets. W- why stop the show? And oh, is it two years? Three? Well, it's two or three years ago. Yeah. But he he was into fireworks and he and he blew, you know, his his thumb off and and really just destroyed uh, uh, his right hand. We've made jokes about it. We've had compassion about it. Um, obviously, it was a serious injury. He came back and he's still Jason Pierre Paul. Um, he's still uh, playing at a high level in the NFL. And and we've said he should be the poster boy for firework safety uh, on the Fourth of July. And lo and behold, he did about as best as he could do. This a uh, couple of days ago for Fourth of July, you could look up his page. He posted the pictures. I mean, very very graphic, very 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 uh, his own pictures that he took of his own hand soon after the injury. And needless to say, they're fucking gross. Yeah, I saw that. Why would he put that up, though? You, you, you know why? Because people like us talking shit and people like us saying he should be the poster boy. So he showed the poster. Oh, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I see. I see the intent. I mean, he, he was doing it. Like, he, he said, this is what happened to me. Be careful. Be safe. I'm lucky that I, I still have a hand. And, uh, you know, I mean, you want the hard truth. That's the hard truth of, 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 of fucking around with these fireworks. I, I, I'm sure... Um, as the days go on, there'll, there'll, there'll be some talks about some injuries, kids hurting themselves and all that stuff, and it ain't no joke. Those fireworks, are they're explosives. I was thinking about this. You know that terrible incident that happened in the Bronx, uh, that, that, that kid that was killed, uh, the ju- junior, um, the 15-year-old kill, uh, who was killed um, and, and uh, uh, dragged out of the bodega and... and you know, knifed, and the whole thing was caught on surveillance video, and it was a lot of protests and a lot of uproar and a lot of crying about it, and as there should be. It's a terrible um, injury to this kid. Um, and then the criminals who uh, uh, did it, the gang members who admitted they killed the wrong person, you dumb fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You you dumb fuck. You, you killed the wrong person? <laughs> Uh, and 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 they sent a message on Facebook, yo. Apologizing. Oh shit, yo. We 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 made a mistake, yo. I don't have words for for that, man. At the level of a uh, barbarian uh, behavior is just crazy, man. It's just terrible. Well, I was thinking about this because because everybody wants no mercy for these killers, right? And we were making jokes the other day about the the kid who or the rapper. I, I can't pronounce his name correctly. X. The young rapper uh, who, who was murdered in Florida, and and apparently the guy uh, uh, who who did uh, killed him has already been sexually violated in prison, and obviously the the, the murderers of this kid, 50, this fifteen year old kid, Junior, everybody wants these guys to they want justice, right? You want you basically want these these gang members to get the shit beaten out of them, hopefully get fucked in the ass with a Wonder Bread bag or not <laughs> Wonder Bread bag when when they're in prison. And these kids will be going to Rikers Island, right? So you want that, right? Every everybody could say these guys deserve no uh no compassion and no sympathy, right? I, I would yeah, I would say a firing squad. Okay. Well, they're going to Rikers Island. So on Rikers Island, nobody's smiling. So when these guys get fucked in their ass and beaten up and justice is served to them on Rikers Island, will anybody complain? No, because it's a fucking zoo. But, right. but people are still complaining about other things that are going on in Rikers Island. And, and listen, you can't have it both ways. Either you get the Wonder Bread bag treatment or you don't get the Wonder Bread bag treatment. Uh, uh, what, what are they complaining about? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, like uh, the, the Khalif Browder story. Why? Which was which was a lot publicized. This is a kid who was uh, who, who was accused. Uh, they're not even sure if he did it of stealing somebody's backpack. Uh, backpack. Right. He went up to Rikers Island. Uh, you know, was fighting, getting jumped. Blah 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 blah. By these same type of people. I, I'm just saying, it's like it's jail. And, and what happened to Cleve Browder? And I watched that documentary. Is is brutal. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, of course. It's heartbreaking. But it. I, 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 I don't know. I'm just saying it's like, you know, you want these guys to have justice served. You want them to get the shit beaten out of them. You want them to get the Wonder Bread bag and olive oil treatment. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not making light of, of, of things that happen to innocent people and that, that go to jail and that all that stuff. 
I just was thinking about that because I, I was reading New York Magazine, uh-huh. which I should never read. I stopped reading it for a period of time because it really truly is the hipster white guilt manifesto. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, I shouldn't read it because it always frustrates you because it's just a, a, some one sided bullshit. Anyway, I just was thinking about that. It's, it's, I didn't really have a big, strong point. Yeah, I mean, it's jail. It's, it's not, um, that's what they call it, it's jail. You don't have a good time. You're not supposed to have a, a, a you know, it's not supposed to be a, a, a great place. It's jail. Yeah, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, the, the, the problem is, is that uh, hopefully the people that are in jail deserve to be in jail. And if you deserve to be in jail, like these people who've already admitted to killing this kid on accident, you fucking, they get Wonder Bread bag treatment. It should be sanctioned. It should yeah. actually be part of, of, of like, you know, when you go in there, you get fingerprinted, you, you, you know, like they do all the DNA tests, they, they take your DNA. And all. It should be part of that welcome process to the prison. It shouldn't even right. be like some, sort of, some, like some sort of underground thing. You should get banged in the ass. Upon uh, before you even go to your cell, you should go to your cell with the Wonder Bread bag actually hanging out of your ass. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> so I was with my man Toby Morse. We're in the month of July, and uh, me and him always talk and complain um, about hip hop. Um, uh, we celebrate it. You know, I always go with him to Run Your Canyon. I've been up there doing my little burpees and my my little running and all that stuff, and just getting the fresh air. My my, my dog Wheezy. And uh-huh. we, we were thinking about all the, the Kanye West. Remember, remember, um, in in May, just just the month of May, a, a month and a half ago, how Kanye West, the world stopped on its axis because Kanye West announced he was putting out records. Then he started talking all his Donald Trump shit. Then the famous TMZ thing, and then you put the records out, Duke. Then you put the records out. There's no more talking. We haven't heard from this fucking guy. He did his little listening parties in Wyoming. He did his little listening parties in Queensbridge and all that shit. And, 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 and I wanted to give uh, my full take now that the dust has settled on the Kanye West four records that he put out. May I, Gerald? Go ahead. Go, go for it. I'm listening. <laughs> okay. So Kanye West's record came and went. He put out a brick. He put out a bunch of bullshit. His record's trash. Everybody's like, it's an instant classic. Right. Oh, my God. Kanye's back. He might be a dick, but wow. Listen to the sonics in his record. He's doing things that have never been done before. No one's listening to that record. It's not being played on the radio. It's not being played on the street corners. It's hip-hop. No one's playing it at the park. They're not playing it in between uh, 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 plays up at Dykeman. They're not playing it at West 4th Street. They're not playing it in the hoods of Chicago, St. Louis, or Los Angeles. No one's fucking with that record. Yeah, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it much. You, you haven't heard it? Uh-uh. But what happened? It's not dope is what, what happened. Oh, man. Drake. Drake got the number one spot now. I'm going to get to him. I'm going to get to him. Before Kanye record was the Daytona record by Pusha T, which I've said. I like that shit. He's worked with Kanye West before. He knows how to deal with him. And he got seven songs in a cohesive record. The samples are dope. It's his world. It's that dark underworld drug dealing. The ramifications of being a drug dealer. Glorifying. It's it's what Pusha T does. He spits that shit. He plays with words. Everybody likes that record. The, the production is good by Kanye West. That was actually the first record that came out. Then the whole fucking thing happened with Pusha T and Drake. And we know what happened. Pusha T won that battle. He came out of that battle with all his dignity intact. Right? Which is, right. Which is if, if, you're, if you're in a hip-hop battle, that's, that's inevitably what you want. You want all your hip-hop dignity intact. You don't want to get dragged. You don't want to get... Um, out uh, wrapped. You don't want people to start, you know, pulling out your personals and all that shit. You want at least at the very, like you, you win a battle or you lose a battle is it, by, by, at this point, because it's really not about skills. It's like how much personal information did or didn't get spoken about in this, in this song. The person right. who, who got shitted on is Drake. It didn't stop the people from loving the, the Drake record, which we talked about on the last I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast. 
But the point that I'm making is that Kanye West played himself talking all that Trump shit. He played himself with all his TMZ shit. And he played himself by dropping a whack-ass record. He then came out with the Kanye West Kid Cudi record. I've never been a fan of Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi. I know some people think he's the greatest thing since fucking sliced bread. I, I, I think he's fine. I don't think he's that dope. The Kid Cudi Kanye West record is another brick. Nobody's oh, playing it. Wow. Nobody's rocking it. It sounds like two either. fucking guys crying for help, begging for some attention. Nobody's rocking the record. Blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, the Nas Escobar record, which came and went. Even 50 Cent said, I didn't hear any of those songs on the radio. And then to make matters worse, Jay-Z and Beyonce released the record the day after and took all the sunshine away from Nasty Nas. Again, your hip-hop dignity is either intact or not intact. And based on the response of the Nas record, his hip-hop dignity fucking around with Kanye and Jay-Z and Beyonce dropping a record the next day and just sort of taking the shine off his record, hip-hop dignity is not intact. So... Out of all that, of course, Drake's record is successful, but he'll never be the same after what uh, uh, Pusha T did to him. It's like getting a knock. It's like, it's like what happened to Manny Pacquiao. He was never the same after um, he got knocked out, right? Put to sleep. You're, you're never the same. Like, you, when you get hit like that, you're never the same. Uh-huh. Right, when you right. get knocked out like that, most fighters, most rappers, you just don't come back from it. Drake's laughing because it's like, oh, yeah, everybody's still buying a record. But the respect factor, which is something that really a lot of people overlook, in my opinion. You got shitted on, Drake. I don't care that you, you got your waves and your beard is always intact. None of that shit means nothing to me, Duke. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't like this guy, I see, man. <laughs> I, I, yo, I'm on that Boo Bear shit. I'm on that. I was raised by that. It had an influence on me, Duke. I don't, I don't give a fuck about your waves, Duke. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the old guy on the lawn. You got to chill, man. You got to let, let these cats live, man. <laughs> hey, I let them live. Push your teeth, shut them down. Nah. And, and, Drake, and but, push but your teeth. The point that I'm making, the point that I'm making when I, and then Tiana Taylor, which is the girl, even she, Tiana Taylor is like a sort of a talented artist who she's married to, Iman Shumpert. She's one of these Harlem, you know, sort of rowdy, big mouth chicks. She's talented. She's the one that was in that video dancing. She raps, she sings, she does it all. She's sort of like a Nicki Minaj sort of talent. You know, she, she, you know, she acts, she does all this shit. She put out a record, and even she, and under Kanye West, he produced it. And even she's complaining, I didn't know when the record was coming out. He didn't push it. Um, he couldn't focus on my record because he was doing his record, the Nas record, and the Pusha T record. So, so that was the culmination. The, the point that I was making, the, the reason why I wanted to do this is not about, I don't want to go down the road of Drake, uh, Drake's hair and his beard. The point that I wanted to make was that after all the hoopla of Kanye West dropping all these records, the only person who's not complaining and who has all their hip-hop dignity intact is Pusha T. So he released one, two, five records. And one person's not complaining. Now, apparently, Nas went back into the studio already. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. Apparently, hey, Nas went back into the studio. Apparently, the night that Nas had his listening party, he hadn't even heard the entire finished product of his record. Because everything's oh, wow. happening so quick. Like, yo, know, when, when you put your blood and guts into a record, you could feel it. When, when, when you rush it out like that, there's going to be holes. That's right, just the right. way it is. Like, it's not a freestyle. You're not black thought freestyling. There's going to be holes. Like, when you spend, you know, week and uh, week after week and month after month crafting your shit and, like, you know, you know sort of working on it and, and perfecting it and making it something special, you could feel it. You come up with, like, a true blue classic, a masterpiece. When you rush it out and you're like making all these changes and this guy's in Wyoming and he's got five studios and five parts of the house and he's running around like a manic lunatic, you hear it in the record. And that's yeah. what my, the, the point wasn't about Drake and, and even Pusha T. It was just about after all the, the dust settled, Pusha T is the only one who's not complaining about uh, the, the month of June uh, uh, working for Kanye West. That's my uh, point. Yeah. Okay, I hear you. I just hope his... Uh, 
his streams and his downloads reflect what you're saying. He, he, Drake, he, this is his biggest record. He's never going to be as big as Drake. You, that, like, listen, yo, not everybody's Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, hey, like, but you, like, it's like, it's just like, it's like Cool G Rap. Not a, Cool G Rap was never Big Daddy Kane. It's like, you know, but if, if, if you have your integrity intact, and this was his biggest record, and it was right. a commercial success and a critical success. That's all you could ask for. Pusha T's never going to be like that mainstream, mainstream dude. This was his biggest record. He won the battle versus Drake. He's touring. He he sort of walked away a, a, a hero of it because he took down uh, a, a hero. <laughs> he, he, he 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 took down Drake, and he has all his hip hop dignity intact. He's oh. he's never put it this way. If, it, if this is his most successful album, what, what more can you ask for? True, true. But he'll never, he'll never uh, with that content, with that romanticizing, uh, drug pushing and all that, you'll never get anywhere uh, up in the upper echelon with that stuff. But not That's everybody the, wants to be in the upper echelon. Not, but then, he, he's living a good life. He's making it? millions of dollars. He's touring. Not everybody wants to. Now, see, that's the thing about Drake. It's like not everybody wants to sort of put out this image and appease to, to chicks and to try to appease to everybody. Not everybody has that agenda oh. and, and, as an artist, and that's okay. Not everybody has that fucking agenda. Some people just, he wants to tell his story. He wants to play into his strengths and do his thing. Drake, he's singing on records. He's yeah. like, sometimes he's doing these fucking, this, this dance hall bullshit. Sometimes he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's a tough guy MC. He wants to appease to everybody. Yo. And listen, that works for him. But not everybody uh, cares about that. Some people are like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to do what I do best. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I, you know, I don't fuck with Drake too much, but he's a unique guy in this fucking genre. He's, yo. He's a, a a LeBron motherfucker. He could he does it all. People, the women like the singing, they like the the the, the songs. He writes all kind of different like world music. This guy is a unique guy. I don't. That's not my music, but it has to be respected, man. Because I, I we we covered it. I respect it. I just was yeah. saying after all that because you remember like yo that Kanye West shit that was going on in 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 May. Yeah, that was a oh yo like when you look back on the year of two thousand eighteen. Like in 20 years from now, like when we're old pieces of shit and they have like those CNN things, like the year 2018, that will be part of the year that's brought up. That motherfucker yeah. had, he was, that was the Trump thing, Trump tweeting about him, the TMZ yep. shit, like that will be part of the, the year historically. And, and yeah. then I'm like, but what about the records, Duke? That was my point. Miles Jordan, let me get something funky. All Buttersoft I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast t-shirts are available at districtlines.com forward slash I Am Rappaport. That is districtlines.com forward slash I Am Rappaport. Okay, all t-shirts are Buttersoft. The more you wash them, the more you dry them, the better they feel. They don't turn into little tissue paper. All Buttersoft I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast t-shirts are are available at districtlines.com forward slash I am Rappaport. All right. The 6th of July, the big three will be in Oakland at Oracle Arena. San Francisco, we were just up there performing. You guys are the rowdiest crowd that we've ever performed in front of. Low key. Don't you think so, Gerald? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I love that. I love that crowd. They're fucking Best. nuts, man. Um, Best crowd. So anybody from uh, the Rapper Pack or listening to this podcast, come to the games. Uh, last week we were in Chicago. There was about 10 dudes in there, Rapper Pack dudes. I want to give a shout out to all the dudes that came out there. Um, some of you guys who I know, some of you guys who I met, um, screaming and yelling at me. There was one dude who I think at the end of the game got kicked out. He was yelling and cursing and drunk and all that shit. My man Double A-Ron. Kern and all you guys that were out there. Uh, but if anybody is in Oakland, come to the big three games. Yo, tweet me when you're at the games. I get the, I'm get i the first one in the arena. Come see me at Oakland. The games have been hyped. They've been dope. It's a great afternoon. It's cheap. And uh, if you fuck with the I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, all you got to do is be like, yo, rap. Yo, dingo. Mike Rap. I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Whatever. Talk some shit to me. I'll come over to you um, and, and come see me July 6th. Uh, uh, at Oracle. Shout out to Steph Curry. 
Steph Curry had his third kid, um, yeah. a boy. Congrats. You know that kid's going to have hand-eye coordination. Oh, he's going to be shooting from uh, as soon as they take the ball out on the other side of the court. Yeah, he's gonna he's just gonna be doing some crazy shit. So yeah, uh, he had a son, Cannon Jack. You know, Cannon's gonna have a cannon. Um, and you know, I have nothing but uh, good things to say about Steph Curry. I love that dude. Um, yeah, no doubt. And uh, and and I can't wait to see uh, when when they, when they put a, a a ball, a bat, a tennis racket, or whatever in that kid's hand because you know, like I said, a ping pong a racket. Homeboy's gonna have some uh, hand eye coordination. Yo, oh, go ahead. Yo, did you see uh, on uh, July Fourth that somebody scaled the uh, Statue of Liberty yeah. in New York? Yeah, I, I, I want to, I want to give uh, my Andy Rooney uh, moment about this shit. I saw that. Okay, because you're gonna do Andy Rooney, and then I'm gonna Danny Ayo this fuck. Yeah, I, I was appalled by that. I was like, this arrogant, and and it's an immigrant. This, think about that arrogant immigrant who broke the law and scaled the Statue of Liberty. In my opinion should be fucking deported because they went up there and they're talking about, oh, they want to abolish ICE and abolish immigration laws. If you did any kind of protest of the government in her own country, which is the Congo, they would put your ass before a firing squad. But rather than be grateful for being allowed to come to America to eat, you scale the Statue of Liberty to protest the American government for trying to curtail illegal immigration. I think that's despicable. And I think that arrogance coming from uh, an immigrant, you should be deported, man. Get the fuck out of here with that. And, and I want to say this. Let's not forget what happened in 2001 in the great city of Manhattan, in the yeah, great city man. of New York. Yo, you climbing the motherfucking Statue of Liberty. I don't give a fuck that you protesting and all that shit. They should have dragged that fucking asshole off the fucking statue yeah. And threw it right in the fucking river. Yo, we got problems. That's scary <laughs> shit. Hey, get yeah. the fuck off the fucking statue. <laughs> hey, get that cocksucker off of Lady Liberty. You cocksucker. Get the fucking pellet gun shooter in the fucking ass. <laughs> Yo, you breaking the fucking law. You causing an uproar. You scaring people. How the fuck yeah. do we know we don't, you don't have dynamite? How do we know you don't have that Jason Pierre Paul shit in your pocket? Get the <laughs> fuck off. Get the fuck off the statue. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to watch the fireworks. Get the fuck off the statue. Get the fuck off the statue. Get <laughs> the fuck off the statue. Yo, on the 4th of July, when a, you, you know, this is New York City, man. A lot of yeah. shit can happen, man. Yeah. We had the hey. ter we had a terrible terrorist attack, and you think you're gonna climb the fucking statue? That was that was a target for a while. Remember afterwards, they yep. were like, "Yo, are they gonna blow that up?" Yo, the cops gotta start shooting these motherfuckers. Yeah, man. Give Listen, her man. a fucking BB gun right in the fucking ass. Yeah, yeah. We 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 not taking no precautions. Nah, we're fuck not all that. We're not trying to see who you are and what the banner is. We're gonna nah, start we don't giving give you a fuck about your banner. We don't give a fuck about what you're protesting. You climbing the Statue of Liberty, you should be treated like everybody else. Drag yeah. that motherfucker and throw her in the water. See if she can yeah. fucking swim and then send the fucking boats out there. Fuck yeah. out of here with that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get off the statue before we give you these hot ones. <laughs> Shit's crazy. So I, I've been meaning to talk about this for the last couple episodes. And then I saw this shit on Twitter. And because I got into it with this actress Evan, I didn't get into it with her. This, this this actress Evan Rachel Wood, who, uh, if you don't know her, you've seen her. She's in a lot of films. She got a good career. Evan Rachel Wood. She's on that show now, Westworld on HBO. She was uh, in the movie um, The Wrestler with uh, Mickey Rourke. I think she actually dated Mickey Rourke, which. It's a red flag. Because if you're a 20-something-year-old girl and you're dating Mickey Rourke, you already got a red flag on you. <laughs> no disrespect to Mickey Rourke, but uh, he, he, he's wild for the night. Um, so so uh, last week, this chick, who again, I don't know her, but I, I like her acting. She's been doing it for a while. Evan Rachel Wood from Westworld. She tweeted out some something about how she... She's trying to get a project made that she wants to direct. She's never directed anything. I, and I'm saying that because uh, if you're a first-time director, I don't care if you're on Westworld or not, it's always hard. She's never directed anything. Um, I, I, I look, it's based on my fact-checking. I broke rule number one of the Iron Rap Poor Stereo podcast. 
just because I'm so sick and tired of these fucking whiny motherfuckers. So she tweeted something out about how she has a film that she wants to direct starring four women, written by two women, and she's had all these meetings in Hollywood, and she's been turned down by everybody, and all she's met, this is what she said, all she's met, and the only people that she's come across in meeting are white men. Not men, white men. Okay, and, and what's her problem with they, that? They, 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 <laughs> exactly. What's your fucking problem? Right. What, what, what's your fucking problem? And, all, and so all, I was all saying, of them are and I was saying, I was saying this. Maybe I tweeted this because then this chick blocked me. Maybe the script isn't that good. Maybe the budget is over budget. Maybe they don't want to spend as much money as you're asking for. Maybe they don't believe in you as a director. Maybe it's you. And she said she's been doing this for two years. And I'm like, yo, in, in, in show business, getting something done two years, that's like a weekend. That's nothing. Right, Martin right. Scorsese has spent 20 something years. Martin Scorsese has spent 20 something years trying to get the last movie that he just got made, made. Wow. 20 wow. something years. You hear stories about this shit all the fucking time. Absolutely. I've heard stories about it. It took me 15 years to get this done. That movie, Three Billboards, uh, that just won all the Oscars and was nominated, that, that shit's been around for like eight years. That script. Right. You hear this all the fucking time. It takes time to get a project made. Not everything is snap your fingers and get it done. Right. But what was the thing about white men? No, but she's uh, complaining that, that it was, it's two years and all we've done is walked around and meet uh, white men and they've turned us down. And I, and I, and I say <laughs> this, I've met the same people and I, don't, I, I, I think you're lying. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of white men running there, but there's always white women. And in, in 2018, there's black executives, there's black female executives. Maybe it's you, boo-boo. Right. Maybe it's you, sweetheart. Maybe they don't believe in you as a director. Maybe your pitch is weak. Maybe the script that you believe in so much just it's, isn't it's, that good. Right, right. Fuck it. And maybe it's, you should just take the independent route. And what's your problem with white men? Yeah. They're I mean, like, oh, it's white men. So, so let's say it was all black men. They probably wouldn't even give fu Like, what makes you think that those black men would give you the time of day that would consider your script? They're like, well, if it was, it's white men. Right. The boogeyman. That's that, hey, they, oh, man. <laughs> it's, 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 it's tough, man. I, I don't see you around no black people. I don't see you around no Puerto Ricans. I never seen you on screen, you know, kissing some black dudes in some interracial projects. <laughs> it's a race. You dated Mickey Rourke. You wasn't dating Lawrence Fishburne. Like, do you know black people? Do you know Spanish people? You just want to like, like, oh, but it's white men. They're right. they're the fucking bad guys, and right. they're making all the decisions. You're a white girl. You got the most privileged life in the fucking world, and you complained about your script for two years. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, she's white. She's <laughs> milk white. Oh, I didn't. I thought. I thought it was. No, some, uh, she's milk toast white. Oh, oh, she tries. And she's to beautiful. Get, she's pretty. Oh, she tries to hang the white men out to dry, as to say, look, they're so racist. Yes, they don't. Yeah, they're so racist. That's they that won't white eat. guilt. I'm, I'm gonna say this to any young people of color, and I hate oh, that fucking wow. term. Any dudes out here that are listening to the I Am Rap Stereo podcast, if you're a person of color, now's your time person of color <laughs> now is your time to try to be fucking as many guilty white girls as possible if right, you're in right. your 20s now is the time to be skeeting in these guilty white chicks you could tell them anything oh, you could okay. kick any kind of shit you want to to these chicks they're so filled with guilt right skeet 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 you could tell guilt. them any sob story any kind of any kind of story and next thing you know you could be sugar dicking because oh. they're so they're so twisted with the guilt. That's where it's at now. That's why uh, uh, Starbucks did what they did. That, that's a weapon. That's a weapon now. It's weaponized. And this chick is complaining. Oh, I've been going around for two years. And and your own people won't won't give you a look. <laughs> Maybe it's not good. Maybe it's just yeah. And your own people. And you're complaining about it. And if and it's white men. Right. You're right. lying. Yeah. That's You're your lying. Own, right. One of the you biggest see, production companies, Annapurna, 
is ran by a woman. They do all these independent. You're lying. I don't believe that the only people you met are white men. Or and Go it doesn't to Oprah. Make- you think Oprah's production company's fucking with you? Oprah's not buying your shit. Go to Tyler Perry. He's not buying your shit. He's got a production company. That dude could green light a movie in a second. Go to Spike Lee. He's not buying your shit. You blaming it on white men. Take that bullshit to Spike Lee and Tyler Perry. Uh-huh. It doesn't make sense. Her argument doesn't make sense. Take it, it, your fucking script to Tyler Perry and see if he's going to make that bullshit. Yeah, because these are your own people. So what do you mean? Like, if it's racism, they wouldn't look at you. So how can you uh, call them out? Hey, for it's being- not even racism. It's like, it's women and it's so hard for women. And then I was tweeting at this, at this chick and then other people. And again, I like her as an actress. I don't know her. I know her work. She's a dope actress. I don't say she's dope. She's good. She's not fucking Meryl Streep or Juliette Lewis. She's a good actress. She's, she's good. She's got a good career. I respect her. I'm a fan. As soon as you disagree with these motherfuckers, you hate women, you're an asshole, you're not getting the point. And then, and then people that have nothing to do with show business are saying, you're not listening to her. She said, I know this business. Right. I'm in this fucking business. You don't think I have projects that I've wanted to do? That I thought were dope, that didn't get done. I'm gonna break right. that down later on because I'm gonna get to these other months. You don't think that I've I've wanted to do things that did. it happens to every fucking body, even the biggest of the biggest. You don't think there's scripts and projects that Denzel Washington has been trying to get made for 20 years that just maybe the script isn't right. Maybe they don't have the right director. Maybe it's just never going to happen. That's part of this business. You don't just right. snap your fingers and like, and then you go to Twitter to complain about it. Yo, get your iPhone out and make your own shit. Yeah, people making their own shit. You yeah. can make, you, there's no excuse. Make your own shit. Put your money where your mouth is. So you, wouldn't, so you wouldn't have to go to the dreaded white man. No, oh, the, the dreaded white man. That, oh, that's all you hang around. This other chick, Mindy Kaling. Again, I'm a fan of hers. I read her book twice when I was writing my book. I like her shit. I like the fact that she sort of niched out her own thing. Her and this other actress, Brie Larson. Academy Award nominated actress. I, I can't remember what she was in. The, the, I, it doesn't matter. She Look her up. She's good. They, they, they just gave speeches the other day about how... The critics, the critics of films are all, guess what? White <laughs> men. And how, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna listen to white men telling me what movie to say and what movie. Yeah. Mindy hey. Kalen, you look at her show, The Mindy Project, all she did when she was on screen on her show, she worked all, she's a person of color. She's a person. Uh, of, all she did when she was on her show, The Mini Project, is chase white men. <laughs> Look her up. Every well, time she's, she's po- on her show, she's dating white men. Why you wasn't with some dark, black, deep, African black man on your show? You had an opportunity to do that. Why weren't you making out with some Asian dude? Why weren't you making out with some Puerto Rican dude? The love interest on your show was what? A white man. And now you're right. talking shit. These now, motherfuckers wait, wait. are full of shit, man. Wait, 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 wait. She she's what black? No, she's Indian. Oh, why? What? Yeah, why she wasn't fucking with Luke Cage? I don't know. The love interest See? on her show that she wrote and she created was a white dude. And now you're yeah. like, oh, I don't want to listen to white men telling me what movie I should see. Brie Larson, same thing. Same bullshit. Uh, 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 yo, so rap. So if 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 they they, if she they hate- feel like they're wait, a part wait, of the struggle wait. and like they're always like. You know, and then they want to bring in, like, like as if, like, Spike Lee, and they'd be like, yeah, you, like, it's like trying to get some street cred or some shit wait, like that. Wait, wait, wait. If, if, if she hates white men, right, why would she only write them in as her love interest? That's how you know it's bullshit. It is bullshit. She's a con. A, a fucking con. con. Yo, a con man creates confusion. <laughs> mm. And then finally... The great Scarlett Johansson, icon, one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Scarlett Johansson is one of the biggest movie stars in the world. She's got a proven track record. She's done indie films. She's done uh, big, big box office films. She's done, you know, you know, whether it's DC or Marvel comic uh, superhero film. She's one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Period. 
And she's she's an, a, a feminist. She shows up at all the rallies. She talks her shit. She's on the front lines of all that shit. She, she got cast, or she probably produced it herself, in a film that's coming out called Rub and Tug. Okay? <laughs> That's the title of the film. It has it, it's, a, it's the same same director who who directed her in this film, Ghost in the Shell, which was a dope sci-fi movie where she played a traditionally Asian character. She played a robot basically in the fucking movie. Okay, shit's not even real. It's some sci-fi shit. When you're a big star, you're afforded the luxuries of doing whatever the fuck you want. That's what that's what comes. That's one of the benefits. You get to yeah. green light films. You get to act. You get to do all kinds of shit. You get to play uh, 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 transgender men. You get to be in uh, uh, Iron Man. You get to play boxers. You get to do whatever the fuck you want. That, that's one of the luxuries of being a big star. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of actresses that want to be Charlotte, uh, Scarlett Johansson. There's thousands of actresses that would die to have the opportunity to, to flex their skills and their shit. Thousands. That's the dream of coming to Hollywood. She did it. She hit it. Whether or not you think she deserves it or not has no, 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 no bearing in this. She's a star. She earned it. She's been a star for 10, 12 years now. She's going to continue rocking. She's playing in this movie coming up called Rub and Tug, a transgender man. So she's playing a woman who used to be a guy, or used to be a girl that's now a guy. You, you get it? Yeah, Scarlett is playing a guy. Now. Scarlett's playing a guy that used to be a girl, a transgender man. Like okay. she's she's playing she's playing a, a woman that used to be a guy. Okay. Oh, uh. the trans community is up in arms. They're, and they why is she playing that part? Why isn't it a real transgender person playing that part? Right. You know, like why don't why don't and then it's these two actresses. That are nobody's on the uh, in terms of the list of who's who in Hollywood. It's hard enough to get a movie made for 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 Scarlett Johansson. She's got to jump through hoops too. There's got to be financing. Somebody has to say, is this script good? Do we believe in this director? This amount of money, blah 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 blah. But there's process. There's levels to this shit. Yeah, and is she bankable? She's uh, Scarlett. Of course, they're gonna have that. And not, 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 a, not a nobody trans. A fucking <laughs> nobody trans, whether you're yeah. a trans or not. And these two trans actor, actors, well, they're, they're, they're actresses. They're women. So you're actresses. Right. Her, yeah. I, they're, they're nobodies in terms of like, not in terms of who they are as people, but they're nobodies in terms of what they've done in Hollywood. Yeah, this, this trans actress is saying, why don't they hire a real trans actress to play this part? I'm so sick of not getting the opportunities. I would love to be, I should be in the room that Jennifer Lawrence is in. You want the same opportunities that Jennifer Lawrence and Scarlett Johansson is in? Shut the fuck up, Duke. A word. See, and I tweeted back, and these people are like, you don't understand. You don't get it. I, you think you're Jennifer Lawrence. You're not Jennifer Lawrence, Duke. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence is one of the biggest stars in the world. Scarlett Johansson is one of the biggest stars in the world. You think just because you're a transsexual actress. That you're supposed to get that role. That you're supposed to get that part. Right. And just because you're the real thing, they should hire you. Right. Who's going to see it? Like, you only go into the movie to see Scarlett play that role. She's playing a role, and it, it's, a, it's a, a range of acting. So they can't just throw any Tom Dick and Harry. <laughs> no, you can't. And and do, why did they get Muhammad Ali to play Apollo Creed? Why did they? They should have just never hired James Gandolfini to play uh, Tony Soprano. Well, you should right. be, be, But it's just, every other part should be an actor playing a part. But with trans, you you we we should make the concession and get the right. real thing from a nobody actor. You're a nobody when it comes to this acting shit. Yeah. Clearly, you don't understand uh, movie making and financing and, and, and bankable stars. So shut the fuck up so and shut go the to fuck the background. Up. And these people started talking to me. Like, I, I tweeted out. And then this, this lady was like, I'm, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a pilot and I couldn't get it done. Bitch, please. So, yeah, I so wrote a what? pilot and couldn't get it done. Write another one. Write another right. one. Write another one. Write another one, bitch. Until it gets done. Whatever, you, whatever you got. 
And maybe it's maybe it's not that they it didn't get done. Maybe it's you. Maybe the pilot wasn't dope. Yeah. They, they were like, this is not only like these motherfuckers are sick and being transgender, being gay, and your sexuality has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that shit. You think just because you're trans and just because you're gay, you got rainbow shoot now your ass. Right. Yo, no one cares. Nobody gives a fuck. You right. make it, you make it your the whole of your identity. By asking for this, exactly, and exactly. She, this, this, this woman, uh, Lizette, Tracy Lizette, thinks she thinks that she should have the opportunity to play straight women. This is a trans woman. This is a, a a woman that used to be a guy that went through surgery. She thinks she should be getting the same parts as motherfucking Gwyneth Paltrow and, and <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. I'm gonna uh, tell you something. <laughs> You might play one of those parts, but that's stunt casting. I watched this movie last night by Taraji uh, called Acrimony, and it's, it's, a, it's a fun movie. It gets a little weird at the end, real fucking weird, falls apart at the end. But, but in the movie, Taraji, for some reason, wears contact lenses to change her eye color. You know, it's a character choice. Yeah. When that camera's up on you and you've seen Taraji Henson... Film after film after film. You've watched her week after week after week on that show. And you see her with the green eyes. I felt it was distracting. That camera don't lie. So you think Tracy Lizette, just because you're a trans woman, that you are going to outperform women who are playing women? Or do you think that you should just be given this opportunity because you're a trans actor? Let me tell you something. There's... Hundreds, literally hundreds of parts. I've auditioned. I've gotten turned down. I've gotten close. Every fucking actor. This happens to every fucking actor. You don't always get what the fuck you want. I want to play King Lear. When I grew up, I wanted to play Dr. J. Do you think anybody gives a fuck that I want to play? I'm not the right person to play Dr. J. They should get Wood Harris to play Dr. J. He's more equipped for the role. You're a trans actor. Most likely, that's the only parts you're going to get. Word. There's no concessions in this shit. You're trying to get in the same room as Jennifer Lawrence and you've done nothing? What's your skill set, Duke? Yeah. They're delusional, man. Leave, these, leave them alone. They're not well, getting shit anyway. What's your skill set, Duke? Maybe it's you. Maybe you're just not that good. Maybe it's they know you. That. Maybe they- you're just not that fucking good. Maybe I'm not the best person for someone to put their money behind to play King fucking leer it yeah. happens that's part of show business we don't make no concessions for you and as soon as i started saying this you're a homophobe you're a transphobe uh, yeah, and you know yeah, what i told course. these people g what I, I told them the same shit i tell all these other people i said suck my dick dude oh man that's what they want they want to do that <laughs> but that, that's what i told them i'm like yo you you, you don't know <laughs> shit about this like you go at them hard once you start talking, you're tra- you're 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 that that's if you don't agree with them and abide by everything they say, you're a transphobe. Fuck yeah, no, I'm you. No, I'm yeah, not. No. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. We grew up in New York City. Just because you're yeah. gay and you're trans doesn't make you. You don't have rainbow shooting out your ass. You're trans and you're gay. Move on with your life. I don't have a problem with it. Do you? Right. Obviously, they do. Nobody has a problem with that. Dude, your sexuality is uh, you, it's yours. You can do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. It's always them putting that in people's face. Who cares? No one cares. Who and, cares? And, and That's the you. the minute you don't abide and agree with the, the, their personal struggle and what they're going through. Right. I don't give trans- a fuck. And then, then, then they're, these same white women, because they've gotten the surgery to be called white women, the first thing they'll start doing is people of color this. Yo, yeah. Don't yo. use me. Don't. Use me as your fucking pawn. Fuck you. That's you, what I you, say. Fuck hold you. Hold your own nuts. Hold your own nuts. Don't use black people. Don't use Mexicans. Nothing. We don't give a fuck about your sexuality. You stand there alone. Exactly. I don't, they always try to use black people as the pawns, as our grievances are sort of like theirs. Get the fuck out of here. We don't want that. Fuck you, man. That's what I told him. And then I, started, I said, yo, you better look me up because you started to talk shit. I don't give a fuck if you're trans, gay, or look me up. Who cares? I talk shit. They think just because they're trans and, and they're, they're gay and they're talking about it on Twitter, they're heroes. Right. I'm a real hero. I'm an actual <laughs> hero. I save planes and shit. Word. That's how I get down. I'm a real hero. You're tweeting about it. 
Yeah. You're not doing shit. I, sa- I, I saved planes and shit, Duke. Fuck is you saying? Uh, <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> All right. Fuck clowns. You don't understand what it's like in show business. I don't understand what it's like in show business. Right, the right, fuck right. Fuck out of here. Yeah. I, I know exact. I'm in this shit. Right. I'm in Before, this shit. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I'm not even going to name wait, his wait. name. Wait, wait, Hold on, rap. Go ahead. Hold on, rap. Before these people transitioned, you've been in the business. <laughs> exactly. Getting busy. <laughs> I've been getting busy, getting rejected. Getting turned down and getting parts. I do it all, motherfucker. I know this shit. Before you got your dick cut, my man was in auditions, B. Exactly. <laughs> You're trying to tell me about this fucking business. There ain't no compassion in this shit. I want to play an Australian librarian. They don't want me to play that part. There's other people that are well, more well-suited to play that part. You see me complaining. If I went on Twitter, if I came on this podcast... And mention every single time I get turned down for something or that motherfuckers tell me no when I either want to play a part or when I want a project on. You know what I would sound like? Right, right. You, you would sound like these guys. I'd sound crazy. You'd be like, yo, rap, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares right. about this shit. Right. Oh, you didn't get the part in the next, you know, $150 million movie and you're complaining? There's little kids trapped in tunnels and shit. There's levels to this shit. I'm not going to name names, but I'll just say this. One of the biggest rappers attached himself as an executive, bigger than 50 Cent, attached himself to executive produce a project that I wanted to get done. All in. All in. Script was dope. Great. I was like, yo, we're going to get this done. And we got this motherfucker. He's executive producing it. Executive produced by so-and-so. I'm, a matter of fact, I'm going to tell it because I'm, it's the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast fans. It's a project. Eminem was executive producing. It was a dope-ass script. The script was written. It wasn't no idea. The script was actually written. Eminem was executive producing. We took it all over town like this fucking Evan Rachel Wood. Eminem produced. That's like a brand. That's like Coca-Cola. We, we went everywhere. Every fucking place. Inevitably... They didn't want to make the project. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was the script. Maybe it was, it just wasn't the right time. Maybe the, these networks and these streaming companies, Netflix and all them, maybe they just had projects that were similar to it. Maybe they had sim- similar projects um, in, um, in development. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. You dust yourself off. It's a disappointment. You keep it fucking moving. You keep it funky. Shit happens yeah. all the time. Shit happens all the time. This chick Evan Rachel would complain. Two years, no one wants to make the price. Who cares, chit lady? Imagine if I I went on Twitter and I was like, I had this project that Eminem was going to executive produce. It was about blah, blah, blah. No one wants to make it. You think anyone would give a fuck? I'm a white (laughs) man. The most privileged motherfucker out here. No one gave a fuck. The shit's on the shelf. Maybe we'll pick it up later. Maybe we won't. You keep it funky. You keep it moving. Fucking complaining on Twitter about that. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) All right. All right. We're going to rattle these sick fucks of the week off really quick. This award is earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. This guy's really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. Who the fuck the door? You what? You fuck the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What? Sick fuck. The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 Yeah, you hear it. Sick fuck of the week. Theme song. It's an award that's earned, not given. It's an award that's earned, not given. In New York City. New York City, um, in Manhattan, some sick fuck was arrested on 13th Street, on 13th Street in the, in the Campos Plaza houses, I think that's Uh on the east side, isn't that on the east side, yeah, East 13th Street, this guy was arrested, I don't know how they got tipped off, he had 33 malnourished Shih Tzu dogs, 33 dogs in his apartment, 
They came in there. The dogs were, were suffering. It's the middle of the summer. There's shit everywhere and all this stuff. 33 dogs in a one-bedroom apartment in New York City. The guy oh, was arrested man. for animal cruelty. Lock this piece of shit up. Yes, yes. Lock and, and, up. And, and this sick fuck, if you, if you look at the pictures, there's literal, literally dog shit everywhere. You could smell the room through the pictures. 33 dogs in a one-bedroom apartment. Oh, uh, well, they don't call them shih tzus for nothing. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> oh, I got one for you. Okay. Oh, uh, Thai, Thai woman gets heated that her guy flirts with women. So she planned uh, some heinous shit. She uh, bricks him up with a surprise morning mic check. Then she pulls out a sharpened uh, cleaver. Yeah. And she swings for the fences and chops off my man's pipe with the precision of a hibachi chef. Yeah. She then takes it and throws it out the window. Yeah. It, get, it gets run over by several tuk-tuks. Those are Thai cabs. Uh, it cannot be attached. Uh, so he lost his, uh, his pipe. Uh, I, if, if I lost my pipe and the doc came in and told me, yo, we can't reattach it, I would ask, at least can I take it home? Uh, I'd stuff it and put it in a glass case. <laughs> but even, even if it was ran over? Yeah, you stuff it. You, uh, uh, like, you, you know, like, mangled dick, and and have it in the basement. You, you, like yo, you, you, you'd want it like you know those science experiments where they put like you know like like uh, like frogs and then they they put it in the the formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah. This is what I had. You could get that <laughs> shit if you could in this day and age. You could get that shit put on a nice chain. You could rock that shit on a chain. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, would, I heard I about keep... this man. This woman cut off money's loaf because he was. Yo, just leave him. Yeah. She and, used a 12-inch carving knife to, to chop him. off his 7-inch dick. It's not even a she, fair fight. Yeah, she got him aroused. And then it was a clean swipe. Yo, Miles, give me the Wu-Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know this rapper, uh, um, Ty Dolla Sign? Yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't know all of, or any of the music. Okay. He was on an Air Canada flight. Ty, hold your head, Duke. There's a blind passenger, a blind passenger, okay. and her seeing eye dog seated in front of him. This is a blind person. He tried to get money, well, the woman, and her dog removed from the plane because of his allergies. Duke, Duke, you got to get up <laughs> off the plane. If you, if, if, first of all, I don't know who's allergic to dogs. I've never heard of that. Second of all, if you got a problem with, with a blind person and they're seeing eye dog, which is all sanctioned and legalized, you get the fuck off the plane. <laughs> yeah, man, come on. This is, that's ridiculous. You get off the, the, the plane, man. Why, why are you worried about that? They're blind. Have some compassion, man. Exactly. Uh, next sick fuck. A woman who was declared legally dead went through a car crash. Family grieved. This is in South Africa. Was in a morgue. The body was pulled out of the refrigerator to, to be moved. Again, car crash, declared legally dead. While she was being pulled out of the refrigerator, they realized this woman was not, in fact, dead. She lived. Damn. Yo, who's, who, who's doing the pulse check? <laughs> who, who, who are the doctors that declared this person dead? Right. And they, damn, they put you in the, in, in the freezer. They put you in the freezer. You, you come out, you're like, yo, what the fuck y'all doing, man? <laughs> the doctors, uh, the, the, the staff should be uh, let go. Fire everybody. Yeah. And imagine you know, the family members. Like, yo, Marcy, yo, he, I, she got in a car accident. She died. You know, and, we got to go identify the body. Maybe she's out cold. They're, they're crying. Right. They're looking. And then two days later, they're like, yo. <laughs> Marcy's, like, Marcy's, she, she, she's good to go. She, she's back. <laughs> yeah, the doctors are like, yo, par, pardon me, man. Yo, she all right. <laughs> right, pardon me. <laughs> Finally, uh, in Michigan, uh, a woman was arrested. Her Chinese food order didn't come out the way she wanted. She got into a little scuffle with the people at the Chinese food restaurant. You know that spot, China One? Yeah. China one out there in Mount Clemens, Michigan. She got into a scuffle with the, the, the lady who didn't speak English. Uh, she was actual Chinese. Um, 
and bit the lady's ear off. <laughs> what? No, bit the man's ear. The woman, the, the woman uh, who was buying the food got into a fight with Duke uh -huh. and bit his fucking ear off because of the Chinese order wasn't, wasn't laid out correctly. Yo, what? A, yo, you want some more duck sauce, some soy sauce, another egg roll? Just ask for it. You biting people's ear off and shit? Yeah, come on, man. Come on. Stop with the bullshit. Stop. <laughs> yo, uh, I see uh, what, one last thing I saw. This is not a sick fuck. I saw there was a lot of brouhaha about uh, Trump reversing Obama guidelines for uh, uh, diversity. Be careful here. Don't lose us any fucking listeners. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm Be not going to go crazy. Be careful here, you fuck. I want to I I give you uh, what it means, like what, what the intent was that, because it's a lot of bullshit, and I checked it out. The, check it out. The plan is to tell schools that race shouldn't be considered in admissions uh, and I agree. Why should that be considered? It's about grades and competence. I don't want none of the set asides. That's what I'm saying. So the guidance documents by the Obama administration that call for school superintendents and colleges to consider race when trying to diversify their campuses will be thrown out because Justice Department ruled this. In rescinding these guidance documents, the Justice Department ruled that the executive branch cannot circumvent Congress or the courts by creating guidance that goes beyond the scope of the law. Well, so, race also has to do with class. Race also has to do with opportunities. Imagine in 1987 when we were at Erasmus Hall High School, all those kids in there, it's overpacked school. Most of the students are good students. It's a rowdy fucking school. That school was filled. That school was filled with kids of immigrants, correct? Like, we were in that school, yeah. there was Spanish people, Haitians, Jamaicans, obviously, you know, Americans and all that stuff. Imagine, the, the, there, there's, there's some kids in that school that we went to, it was a fucking zoo. They're in this bullshit school, they're busting their ass, there's some good students in there. They're, 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 they're getting overlooked, not necessarily because of their race, but because of their class. Because of the schools they go to. You know, if you're from the hood, most of the schools are not considered elite schools. So when we're in a school like Erasmus Hall and schools like that exist and there's kids in there that do deserve to have the opportunities, may not have the money, but the schools they go to because of, because of their class, because of their finances, because of where they're from, they're not getting looked at. So it's not just not race. It has to do with class and the things, go, the, the things coincide. But they, they, this, wasn't, this, wasn't a, this wasn't targeting class. <laughs> this is like, yo, it's race neutral. It's, we're looking at you as a human being. Like, what, what, what is your grades? It don't matter. You could be Haitian. You could be Jamaican. You could be Iranian. You could be whatever. It's not, we're not looking at race. And we don't want uh, any guidance to do that. So if your grades come are, are, are good and you come to us, it's about that. It's yo. about... I like that. I, I I like that. I don't like I don't like the uh, class set has something to do with it though. Well, what, why what, do you what, think? What class? Like, well, like, well, why do you think they have that? Like our mutual friend, fuckhead, Ratso. He went to that school, Hunter, in New York City, right? Uh huh. Oh, so he earned his way into that school, right? He he took that test. It's an elite school. Hunter's like this elite school for like the smartest of the smart kids. It's a public school. Everybody gets an opportunity to take this test. On they they take and the smartest got, of the smart kids, right? And he got in on his merit, on his uh, competence. It wasn't because he was black they accepted him. It, it, it was because he showed competence in his grades and he was admitted. Boom. That's it. So that's but, what I like. But if you go to shit schools. And you rock in. But what if you it, go to shit schools because you, go, you live in a shit neighborhood? So? And, but, and, but it's the, all the, these things go hand in hand. Listen, the, the reality of it is you, your, your man, Donald Trump, he wants to abolish anything that has to do with Obama. Just be, simply because he doesn't like Obama. He didn't like Obama from the to beginning. And, 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 and this is what I have to say about uh, uh, Trump. People say, why do you disrespect uh, uh, Trump? Why do you talk so much shit about the president? I treat Dick Stain Donald Trump with the exact same respect and adoration that he treated Obama. None. 
He, 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 was, he was on the forefront shitting on Obama the day he got elected, questioning this, questioning that, uh, publicly ridiculing him, teasing him, questioning whether or not he was a citizen, questioning whether or not he had a birthright. Fuck Donald Trump. And he gets the same respect from me that he gave the last president. Zero. And, that's just, and I encourage everyone else to do the same thing to that oh, motherfucker. Man. He treated Obama, President Obama, like he was a derelict. And he deserves the same type of treatment. That's how you treat a president? That's how you're going to get treated. Okay. I, I, I understand. I, I, I just was saying about this stuff that was going on with, with the diversity thing and stuff. I'm not I, an I, expert on it, but, but, but it ain't just about color. It has to do with class and opportunities. It has to do with finance and opportunities as well. And Donald Trump's, his whole agenda is to just, anything that Obama fought for, we're going to get rid of it, whether it was good, sort of good, um, pretty good, kind of good, or just blatantly uh, wrong. That's I, I everything he does. That. He wants to abolish. He, he wants to get rid of, like, all track record of, of Obama being in office. I, and, I, I, I don't agree with that, but go That's ahead. what he's been doing. Yo, listen. Yo, it's a new administration. They sent these guidance uh, uh, documents to the Justice Department because they believed that it went beyond law. And the Justice Department reviewed it and agreed. So this is what it is. Like, yo, fuck all the race shit. Uh, fuck the race shit. It's, a, it's you race neutral. You say fuck neutral. the race shit like race isn't a factor. It is a factor. I'm saying, and I'm saying. And he just saying, wants to appease no, that fucking I'm, I'm audience. No, I'm saying... In, in reality, you you you, you support be this based. fucking dumb guy. This no, guy's a piece no, of no, shit. No, I support. Uh, not. I don't like race. I don't look at things but there through is race. race though. But I don't look at things through race. I know that's you why, don't. But that's you, why you, my you, mind is open. It you shouldn't don't. be race. How 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 the fuck should colleges be a uh, a uh, uh, pandering to certain groups? How? Why? Then you think that so then these colleges are just going to be filled with okie doke white kids? No, no, it ain't. It's, if, if, if it's based on grades, that's fair. But a lot of, but, but if it's it, the merits, if, if, you don't, if you don't have the certain opportunities because of where you're from and your class, your financial class, then it, it's not fair. And, that, but, but, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not black and white. And the only reason why Obama, the only reason why Trump is doing this. And the only reason why he raised the red flag is to shit on Obama. And that's why I encourage everybody to shit on him. Oh, man. And, and You're also not this, at it. this 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 piece of shit, Donald Trump, and this goes out to Scaramucci. Maybe he could come on the show. You went on that bullshit barstool podcast and you took over the show. Why don't you come on this thing? And we'll treat you with respect. We we break balls, but if you come on this show, Scaramucci, you'll get treated with respect. I'm not gonna like ridicule you or set you up to look bad. You maybe he, uh, Scaramucci can answer this. President Obama, when he got a, a, a inauguration, he, he, the night that he got elected, had that huge, uh, um, iconic, historical um, rally in Chicago, right? Yeah. Clinton, he had, he had, he went back home. Bush, throwing out pitches, he got, he got standing ovations in Texas and all that shit. Donald Trump, this piece of shit. He's from New York City, has not showed up to New York City one time since he's been elected. Why don't the people... I know why. Why don't the people of New York City get to see you? Why don't you go home to your neighbors? Why don't you go back to Queens and do a rally? Why? A, why, why do we look at him the, the worst? Why do the people of New York like shun him the most? We because we know this guy's a piece nah, of shit. We know his hand gestures. We know all that shit talking. We know nah. all his moves. This guy's a grifter. He's a fucking con man. And he was and and he knows that the own his own people don't respect him. And and in the entire the entirety that he's in office, he'll never go to New York City. Yo, you know why? Because it's a liberal Democrat state. He, of course, he's not going to go there. He lost that state. Maybe and, it's beyond and, that. And, He'll get booed. That's why he don't go there. He'll he get lost. booed. It's a Democrat state. But, but, but listen, you have a lot of disrespect for this guy, but this guy has properties all over the planet. This guy has all uh, golf, uh, uh, everything, all kind of real estate. Why you count you his know, pockets, Duke? This is a successful You count guy. his pockets. You, you, I'm you're talking you. about him and like he's sound, Drake. You sound crazy dissing this dude. This dude is, is very successful. I don't care he about is, that. He I'm, is the president. I'm he Pusha is, T, he, motherfucker. He I don't beat, care about how many, he, I don't care about how many downstreams you have. I, I'm saying, listen. I'm Pusha T. You sound crazy dissing this guy because, yo, no matter what you say, he beat 
all of your fucking guys, yo, man. Yo, I don't give a fuck about the. Yo, I'm Pusha T, B. I don't give well, a I'm fuck. Pusha T. I don't care about his music. I don't Pusha care about T. his his hotels, his success. Just because you got hotels and just because you got success doesn't make you a good person. I treat him with the same respect he treated the last president who was in there for eight years. And, you, and, you're and, supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to lead by example. Your example was to begrudge, to shit on, to question, and to, and to try to demoralize everything that President Obama did. You get the same thing from me, Duke. I don't give a fuck. You're a leader. You're supposed to lead by example. I follow but, but, your example. So, so, so in, your, in your mind... His, he's he's not his administration is running the country into the ground. I know it's not not running into the country into the ground. So Wait, so so what do you care? But his behavior, his behavior. What his, are you his fucking? Oh his God. behavior, the divisiveness, the words he uses, the insulting, the manipulation, all of that. He said the press is the enemy of the state. I, all, I believe all that. the insulting and all this shit. All this stuff, all the all the, the the Kaepernick stuff, all the Jimmy Fallon shit, and so on and so on and so on, calling uh, uh, immigrants animals, the free throw shooting when he went to Puerto Rico, he's he's giving out paper towels, shooting it at these people that haven't eaten, their families have been killed. All that has to do with, forget the policy, I don't care about the policy, I don't even give a fuck about the fact that I, me, Michael Rappaport, is benefiting from the tax stuff. I don't care about that. You don't? So, no. So why do you vote? So why the fuck you vote? I, what do you mean? Oh. Why do I, I voted for the Democrat. Because to me, it's more important to have civility in the country. And just than this motherfucker. I don't care about the taxes and all this shit about the economy being his. The economy was doing good before he got into office. It's not like there was a housing crisis. The economy but, was on the rise when he got in the office. And he continued that. It wasn't like it, it, wasn't like it was when, when Obama got in there was a shit show. But none of that uh, matters to me. What matters to me is the shit talking. What matters to me is the insulting. What matters to me is the lack of respect for the people and the manipulation. That's what matters to me. Uh, oh, okay. I, I just say, for me, I like the self-confidence to go at the press, and he's not a uh, politician. Why doesn't he go at the Fox press? He goes at all of them. No, if he you're doesn't. talking shit, he goes at all of them. Fox covers him in a way, in a, in a good light. Compared to the others, so should, yo, should you like be covered that. in just a good light or a critical light? It, it should be fair. Okay, so I, Fox uh, News isn't fair. Fo Fox News is is uh, more uh, favorable compared to the others. The, so Fox News, he goes at the others. Fox where News is in everything is scrutinized. Every, but yo, I, I I like the governance. Of course, this is his personality. It's a little crass, but little? every human being is different. Every human being is different. A little. What What are you doing? As uh, as a as a uh, president, are you what? What are the policies? How's it? How does it affect the American citizen? That's more and important not than well. anything. It's not affecting the American citizens well. Well, well, we're going to see his presence is affecting anybody well. No, nobody. You, whether you whether you suck him off and you believe in him no. or not, because when this fat fat motherfucker leaves, we're going to be the one cleaning up the mess. I've said Yo. it before. I've said it when when he's gone, we are all going to be the one cleaning up the mess. Yo, I'm t he he's he's not going for 2020. I'm telling you, you guys think this guy's like Yo, the you're, worst you're, dude. What you what you see? You're, he's not going. You're missing. He's not going nowhere. And, and so, what, but eventually he's going to go. And you know right. what? If he loses in 2020, they're going to have to drag him out. He's going to try to say it was fixed and all this shit. This guy's a fat nah. piece of shit. Nah. Well, well, you you can't say that. You can't say that if this, this man won the presidency, man. He, he won it. I, I don't understand. Just let it play out. All the hatred and all that shit is crazy, man. I'm it, just it, treating him with the same respect yo, he treated the last president. Yo, all the hatred, well, he set that off. So I, he gets they, it right back. Well, some people feel Obama set off all the divisiveness with, all, with a lot of bullshit. So some people feel that way, too. So I'm just saying, let this dude do him Yo. I'm letting him do him. You can't do anything about it. But I, rest assured, it ain't a sure thing because there's going to be a lot of motherfuckers voting. Hopefully, you'll vote in the next, next election and uh, everyone else will get out there and vote in the next election and we'll see what's popping. And whether he wins, he wins. He doesn't win. As soon, as soon, whether it's four, year, four more years or not, he's going to be gone at some point. And when he's gone, we, we, all of us, 
You who's the candidate? The Make America Great, these fucking, these, these crackers in the middle of the country, we're going to have to clean up all the divisiveness and all the hate that he's brought to the forefront. And it started with the hate that he brought to the forefront with Obama. So I give him the exact same treatment back. Fuck this fat, dirty, sloppy, self-tanning, tanning bed motherfucker. Fuck him. Who, 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 who's the candidate? Since we're in 2018, we got two years it left. It might not matter. It's, it's, who, Jenny Jones? It might who, not who, matter. Who, who's going who's gonna to be uh, running against it him? Might <laughs> it, 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 you, you might not matter. You you might maybe could put... It, it might not matter. I don't know who the candidate is. It might not matter because the, the, the people are going to vote. And every it's going to be the, the biggest election ever. And this it might not matter. I'm not saying it's going to be guaranteed. I'm not saying it's not going to be a fight. I'm not saying it's not going to be competitive. But it might not fucking matter because this guy's so unlikable. This guy is so divisive. He's so wrong for the job that it might not fucking matter. There ain't no dope fly Democrat with all, with all like, you know, with good looking who could argue and talk shit to say it might not matter. I, I, yo. You want him to win again. You like this motherfucker. Crazy. Absolutely. Zion Rapport Stereo Podcast. I'm out. <laughs> Peace.